Hello and welcome to the big picture. Today is the 63rd anniversary of the adoption of the Indian Constitution by the Constituent Assembly presented by Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. 63 years later, a clutch of civil society groups and people's movements from across the country have launched a five-day Jan Sansad or People's Assembly in the capital today to highlight the voice of India's mainstream. The assembly also seeks to highlight the glaring fault lines which have resulted in many of the problems facing the country, even as it seeks to reaffirm the constitutional commitments. As the countdown to 2014, when the general elections to the Lok Sabha is scheduled, these activists from across the country are also seeking to draw attention of the parliament and government towards the real issues concerning the people and also build a people's manifesto for the 2014 elections, which it expects all political parties to address. Today we will look at what these voices from across the country are trying to articulate and also how the parliament has responded to these voices and what they expect from the parliamentarians. To discuss this, I have with me today Anjali Bharadwaj, Secretary National Campaign for People's Right to Information, Najma Heptula, a BJP MP and former Deputy Chairperson of the Raj Sabha, P.V. Rajgopal, President of Ekta Parishad, and will be soon joined by J.D. Seelam, a Congress MP. Welcome to all of you. Uh, first, let me uh, come to Anjali. Anjali, why was a need felt to, to have this kind of a People's Assembly or Jan Sansad, as you people are calling it? Where was the need for it and what is your aim? Well, uh, there are several objectives to holding this Jan Sansad. The first is, of course, that it provides a common platform to social movements, to groups across the country, which are working on different issues, but with an underlying theme of, uh, of making sure that democratic rights are realized, constitutional rights are realized by people. So this is all the groups coming together to demand what they feel uh, need to, needs to be done to ensure that injustice isn't done, that growth is inclusive, and to look at various issues that need to be addressed. Apart from that, uh, we saw that the last session of the parliament was a complete washout. Right. We feel that there are several legislations pending in various stages in the parliament which need to be passed, which need to be debated, which need to be improved upon. And what we are hoping to do over the next few days is at Jantar Mantar, there is going to be different issues being focused on on the next four days. Mm -hmm. There are going to be issues of governance, so the whole anti-corruption grievance redress set of laws which are pending, bills that are pending in the parliament at various stages will be discussed. People will talk about what their expectations of those bills are. Uh, another day there will be legislations related to basic services like education, health, uh, food will be discussed. Uh, another day we will have discussions on land reforms, land acquisition and those agriculture and those issues and of course issues of gender will also be looked at. The idea is that each of these days people will together discuss these issues and finally res pass resolutions, adopt resolutions, which we hope will form part of a people's manifesto towards the 2014 elections. So we hope to take these to the political parties. We also hope that this will put pressure on different parties in the parliament to legislate good laws which will actually ensure that constitutional guarantees are met. Let me go to Rajgopal. Mr. Rajgopal, from what uh, Anjali says, there is an underlining um, message that there is a huge disappointment uh, of, from the civil society as far as the civil society groups and people's movements are concerned about the way the parliament has been functioning or the way the political parties and the government has been reacting to various demands and needs of the people. Is that, I mean, is my assessment of what Anjali says, is it right? Do you, is, that the, is that the concern behind this Jensen, sir? Yes. See, the issue will be after 65 years of freedom right why is that we are not able to deliver justice to the weakest and poorest people of this country the marginalized people of this country uh, see at the time of independence even mahatma gandhi said look we have achieved political freedom but economic and social freedom are yet to be achieved and ambedkar sahab also said the same thing one vote to one person doesn't necessarily guarantee equality in terms of economic and social justice. Now, we had enough time, 65 years, government after government came to power 
and we haven't really looked at this issue of delivery of justice to the poorest section of the society. And this is why various civil society organizations are coming today to see how this can be achieved. This is not against anybody, but then basically the government uh, has the responsibility to see that the spirit of the constitution is executed. You know, it is not only a legal framework, but also the spirit of the constitution need to be uh, looked into and we feel it is not being done. So large number of people will look at this agenda and try to motivate and pressurize the government to do what they are supposed to do. Okay. Uh, that's, that's interesting. Uh, let me go to uh, Najma Heptullah. Najma Heptullah ji, you heard what the two uh, civil society activists have said. You have been in the parliament almost half of these 60, 60 to 62 years that the parliament has been in existence. You know, when, they, when, when these people talk about the spirit of the constitution not having been upheld, when, you, when, when such, such a Jensen set has to be held after 62 years, that, you know, that, that to, to focus and to tell the parliament, to tell the government that, you know, these are issues which have still not been tackled. Don't you think that's a serious cause for concern? You know, I believe in democracy. Uh, and I have uh, I've been the president, I mean, deputy chairman, of course, and most of the legislation for last 18 years, I've been, almost 18 years I was there, so I'd seen right. legislation being brought to the House and discussions. I also was the president of Interparliamentary Union, yes. which is an organization of 148 democratic institutions. So my belief in democracy is strong. Right. Commitment. And I feel that this Jan Shansat should have been started much earlier because we brought democracy in this country after the independence a different kind of democracy which is anywhere in in America or in uh, England, though we originally accepted their formula. Right. But the main thing is that people's consciousness should be there. I'm very happy that the people are conscious and they're asking their elected representatives certain questions for which they do not have the answer or they have not been fully satisfied. The main thing, I will put two points, that the parliament has done its duty. You think so? Whether it is you th you think one so? party's you th government or another party's government. Uh, please let me complete. Okay. If you want to interrupt, then I cannot speak because oh, no. the train of thoughts breaks. Okay. The thing is that Parliament has been doing its duty in getting the legislation passed. I agree that many a times, not today, but all these years that I was deputy chairman, the House had been interrupted by various political parties when they were in the opposition. So nobody is clean from that point of view. The, the other thing is that the government which is of the day who is holding the authority to bring the legislation and also the opposition which brings the concerns of the people before the parliament they both should work together now if the government does not agree to take up the issues which are concern of the people then the government is responsible for it we should analyze and this Jan Sansad should analyze. I would ask them to do that. Why at certain point of time the house did not run and it became a washout? What was the government's attitude towards certain legislation? Because government is responsible to run the parliament, not the oppositional alone. Yes. Every time the blame comes on an opposition, they, they didn't run the they did allow. But nobody is trying to understand that there are certain issues of the concern of the people. What is the opposition? Representative of the people. Rajmaji, if they raise certain issues on the floor Rajmaji, of the house, is it not the duty of the government to respond Raj, to it? Rajmaji, yes, please. 
see, you have, as you yourself were pointing yeah. out, you have been in the chair for 18 years. You were part of the ruling ruling governments, and you have also been now recent from recent past. You have been in the opposition. See, the as far as the people are concerned, what is no, important I have been is in that the opposition. No, what is what is what is what is important as far as the people is concerned is that the parliament should run, the legislation should pass, key key issues needs to be discussed. This blame game between the government and the opposition, which has been, you know, which, which has been a pattern for the last several years now. I'm not doing the blame game. Okay. So you, I'm not you, doing you, the blame you are, you are saying that the owners, because you're you know, saying you that the owners. I was in the, in the government. Yes. No, I did not say this government. You didn't understand what I said. I said I have been in the chair. Right. I was neither the opposition nor the government. I, from the chair, observed that any government which was in power should listen to the voice of the opposition. Why? Why? Just now we are discussing okay. because uh, other opposition parties are in opposition and Congress is in the ruling. Absolutely. But there has been a time when BJP was in the government and they were, Congress was in the opposition along with their own supporting party. The question is, the concern of the people has to be raised in the House and under what rules it should be raised that is, and how it should be raised, well, the government of the day should concede to okay, it. Okay, okay, let me, let me get back to Anjali. This is the, this is the argument of the, uh, the, politi the, the, the members of parliament and, you know, they say, the, they say the government has to do it, the, but what is it? What is what are your concerns? What are those important legislations which have been pending in the last few years, which needs immediate addressing? No, I think uh, I mean you know I agree with you that this needs to rise above the blame game yes. because uh, we completely agree that there are issues of concern which must be taken up in the parliament. Uh, one form would be for opposition parties to, of course, say that the government is not doing what it ought to be doing or the government to say the same about polit or about the opposition, but the parliament must perform. We feel parliament that must the, first function. the parliament must function. There are very, very serious consequences of important legislations not getting passed. And it also erodes a very, very basic faith that people ought to have and do have yes. in the in democracy and parliamentary functioning. And I think some of that has also been evident in the last year and a half in the kind of voices that we've heard uh, coming from civil society. And I think that it is Im of immediate concern. There are several legislations, even if we look at the right to food bill, for right example. Bill. It's a very important bill. We really think that it needs a lot of improvement. This was one it's of in the, the standing committee. Yeah. And we are hoping that the standing committee is going to expedite its working and bring it back in front of the parliament so that it can be passed. Now, if an effective right to food bill is passed, it can actually mean a huge, make a huge difference in the lives of the malnourished, of, of children, of people who are living in poverty and malnourishment. I think there is a huge scope for improvement in their lives if a good right to food bill is brought. Now, we would not want, again, a toothless bill to be brought, whether it is a right to food bill or it is a Lokpal legislation or a grievance redress law. Now, if you look at grievances, there, it's a huge problem across the country. People feel they don't get their ration there is no grievance redress. They don't get their pensions. There is no grievance redress. On basic issues, there's no grievance redress. We need a grievance redress law to make sure that people get their rights and entitlements. It's a law which is now awaiting. Uh, the standing committee has already given its report in right. the last session. It's now awaiting a good discussion in the but, parliament but the and problem to be passed. Is the, the, the house doesn't function. Of course. Mr. Rajgopal, one of the, one of the most uh, impressive uh, rallies which we saw recently, which you you people from the Ekta Parishad had organized from Bo, from Bhopal, if I'm not wrong, to Delhi. You know, the, these, these are kind of issues which needs to be taken up in the parliament and addressed immediately. But as far as those uh, issues are concerned, the government gave you certain uh, certain assurances that the, the, the walk, the march from Bhopal stopped in Agra. What else, what do you, how, what do you look forward to as far as the government is concerned on, on those issues which, were, which, had been take, which you people had taken up? See, basically, 
uh, we are trying to look at the issue of uh, land, land reforms in this yes. country. You know, when you say right to life, see, right to life cannot be something that is just written in a piece of paper. This has to be provided. If you don't give a piece of land to people, they are constantly migrating and uh, end up in cities and slums. Right. Now, providing a piece of land was something which we promised, land to the tiller. Right. And now the tillers are not getting land and the land is being transferred to non-tillers in a big way right. to make profit. So the, the, the parliamentarians have this responsibility to see that in 65 years we deliver what we have promised. But at the same time, our concern is also about the shrinking democratic space. You know, in order to strengthen democracy, people need to play a role. Now, across the country, what, what I see is that those who are getting organized non-violently, democratically, to raise issues, their voices are being put down. So, this way we will be only reducing the space for uh, democracy. So, I think on one side, people's voices are to be heard, uh, grievances are to be addressed, but at the same time, we need to provide people to raise those issues properly, non-violently, democratically. That culture is missing in India today. Okay. And this culture needs to be brought if the civil society and government need to work together to find a solution to the problems. Otherwise, we will be constantly confronting each other and never getting problems solved. Absolutely. I, I think you have raised very important issues there issues of how civil society and government should work together and you know the, the, the issue about democratic space which you t spoke about. We will, we will pursue that in the next, uh, after, after a short break. Before we go into a short break, uh, after the break, sorry, J.D. Selam, of co a Congress MP from Raj Sabha will be joining us. Uh, but before that, we will go into a short break and we will be back very soon. Please keep watching. Welcome back. We are discussing people's issues and how the parliament and the government has been responding to it in the context of a five-day Jan Sansad which has begun today in Delhi. Um, you know, about more, over 50 civil society groups and people's movements from across the country have gathered. And in that context, we are discussing this. Uh, we are joined by uh, J.D. Selam, a Congress MP uh, from Raj Sabha. Selam, we were, uh, you know, we have been discussing about how the parliament, how the government, how the political parties have been responding to the various actual issues of the people on the ground and the, the issues which the national movement, movements of various civil society groups and people's movements have been taking up. Taking up. The issue here is, as Rajagopal, you must have heard, uh, was talking about just now, the democratic space is sh shrinking, the people's movements which are, which are happening across the country, they are they are seen by governments as adversaries and not as as people from whom they can take gather you know information they, they, they get get material and then do something good for the people in fact this this adversarial position between the between the government and the people's movements and civil society group isn't that a cause for concern why do you think it's happening yeah girish i think uh, it's a very very valid uh, uh, issue uh, I would, uh, uh, you know, differ uh, Mr. Rajgopal's view because it's not everybody like that. It's unfortunate that the parliament is not, uh, uh, you know, being run uh, continuously for the last two, three sessions. Uh, you know the reasons, even Rajgopal knows the reason. Even, you know, the entire uh, people of the country know how these things are, you know, being sidelined because we really want to take up uh, the people's concerns in form of various enactments. Exactly. For instance, right from 2004, uh, the UPA-led government have come up with the right-based approach. The very RTI is a revolutionary step. Why this activism started? Because information makes people more powerful. Information act makes them empowered citizens. I think you take it, you know, the common man in the villages, he gets information within a fixed time. I mean, that made people to, to get to know what is happening. 
I think based on that, all these things, I know it's a developing country, more areas are open for, you know, um, you know, for the private. So I can understand because there are certain black sheep for which the system is getting spoiled. I think among the people's representative, everybody, including some of the opposition parties, are very much concerned with the, with the, with the people's problems. They really want that the parliament and the legislators in various states to run according to schedule. And then, in fact, there is a lot of demand to increase the number of working days. I think, uh, except few individuals in all political parties, there are committed people to see that the system gets uh, more and more, Seelam. the democracy gets more. Seelam. Then Seelam. I think we, compared to the other countries, we are much better. Seelam, yeah. this, this kind of rhetoric is what we keep hearing from all political parties and you know, parliamentarians. But the sad fact is that the parliaments don't function. In 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 fact, to now in this session, why what what has held up the parliament is something is is an issue that like FDI in uh, multi-brand retail. Is that something which is which? I, let me come to Anjali on that. These are the issues on which parliament is not functioning well. While there are issues which you people have been talking about, some of the legislation which you spoke about, is it isn't there as a problem? You know. Uh, let me not let me not say that one issue is trivial and uh, and the other is not. There might be very serious issues, whether it is privatization or it is FDI or we are talking about anti-corruption issues. I think there are many serious issues, but the question is how do we want to see them addressed? Exactly. Because the important thing is that w they ought to be discussed in the House. There needs to be a very very strong debate, unfortunately, which is missing. And what is happening in turn is that the parliament is just not functioning. Now, the set of people who are actually impacted the most adversely are the most marginalized. Absolutely. It's those people who are completely dependent on the state for their even their basic survival. And I think that needs to be kept in mind. That's a very important fact. And that is what is also something that is bringing people together on this common platform to say that there are these long uh, list of issues which are awaiting legislation. There are this list of issues that need to be even brought into the parliament, right. which are not there anywhere on the anvil. And what needs to be done is for the parliament to function properly and for the for the political parties, all of them, to pay attention to these because even right now at the Jan Sansad, what we are being able to do is just get representatives from people across the country, from different movements, and they are just coming across and bringing out the important issues, highlighting them. Najmaji, you know, Anjali, what Anjali says, you know, um, um, you know, very, very, very relevant, important issues she has raised. My question is, when political parties sit on a day-to-day -day basis while the parliament session is on, the parliamentary parties sit, aren't these, do these issues get discussed at all? Look, there are these important issues which are pending before the parliament. We need to legislate. We need to discuss these things. And, but, you know, somehow those these important issues seems to be seems to get marginalized and that issue of the day or issue of the week becomes the most important thing. So is there a lack of, you know, larger, the big picture missing in the, in, 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 in the political parties and parliamentary parties nowadays? No. Every political party, I assume, I can only talk about the political party in which you have I been am. In, you have been in two major political parties. We discuss the important. Yes, that's why I'm saying at the moment in which political party I am, and I'm sure in every political party, whether it is Congress, or it's left or any other party, or it is the BJP, where, which I am member, everybody, every member of the parliament and the members of the party are concerned. The leaders are concerned about the basic issues. Now, if you look at minutely, I agree with Anjali that there are, you cannot say one issue is more important than the other issue. Right. All the issues are very important. And the question is, have you realized why? At this, we are talking about the people's parliament or the people's assembly, assembly. which is sitting in Jantar Mantar and talking about these issues. And yeah, people's assembly. And what the parliament session is doing. The thing is, if you look at carefully. What is the concern of the opposition today? I'm telling you the BJP, the communists, and most of the political parties except one, which is focusing on 
reservation issue but the rest of the opposition parties want to discuss fdi in retail right. now if the fdi in retail is not stop at this stage then many many people who are earning their living will be watched off okay. by the american big lords okay, is okay. it not an Ma important issue Ma just Ma please Ma listen Ma Ma I, 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 and we want to Ma discuss it okay. to bring to get, the focus to the me, people let me get the, the congress let me Why get the congress the government MP concede to it let me get the congress mp on this uh, uh, silam see this is the this is the problem they they are saying that we need to discuss you people don't want to want to discuss but not under this particular rule you know in 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 this bargain do you don't you think that the real issues of the people okay fdi is also a real issue there's no doubt about it but the amount of wastage of time and why the government why the government gets caught in this kind of a situation quickly uh, silam yeah girish Girish, I yes. think uh, Najma ji is very well aware what uh, happened the last session. The entire session is washed off. When I mean, who is responsible? We wanted them to discuss the, the issues. They never allowed the discussion. I think. But do you, I don't want to score no, no, points here. No, no, Silam. Do you, do you are, admit? Fact do, is that. Do you admit that this yeah. this kind of this kind of imbroglio which happens every session in the parliament is affecting the real issues be, being taken up in the house? And of you, course, it is affecting. And you, we have a, you know, um, uh, okay. food security bill. Yes, we have a food absolutely. Security bill. Food security have, bill, uh, land acquisition uh, bill, land acquisition bill. Yes. Just now, Raj Gopal was. Yes, absolutely. Land acquisition bill, food security bill, women's reservation okay. bill. Okay. And we wanted, we committed to bring all those bills. Hopefully, and why, the, why don't they? Why don't they? Uh, not coming. You know, they, they are only trying to seal up this kind yeah. of. Hope I hope this commitment also comes through. In, in actual terms anyway i am completely run out of time rajgo mr rajgopal last words to you what is the what is it that you would you people would like to tell the parliament how to deal with the issue and what are these important issues which you people are putting for, forward before them see in in today's india the main problem is poverty and marginalization yes if we continue to transfer resources of the people and farmers this way to larger national multinational companies to make profit there will be more poverty more farmers are going to commit suicide more areas uh, of our country will come okay. under uh, okay. the influence of uh, armed groups okay, so Mr. we need to take this challenge and deal with it okay anjali quickly last words to you what what is it that you people would like to tell the parliament and the parliamentarians how to deal with this you know quickly I think it's very important for all political parties to understand that the reason why this Jan Sansad is being organized by people's groups is that we are very far from the constitutional guarantees that we wanted to achieve. It's already been more than 63 years and we would like very concrete action to happen. There are very pressing issues of poverty, of hunger, of natural resources, of corruption. All of these issues are important. They need to be debated, discussed and good legislations which have teeth have to be passed so that people's faith in democracy can be restored can be and in the parliament okay. can okay. be restored it, it is it is it is quite an irony that 63 years later we need to organize these kind of jan sansad tell the the government the parliament what are the actual issues which they need to be tackled hopefully this jan sansad and uh, you know will will open the eyes of the parliament to the real issues before the people thanks to all my guests najma haptullah uh, jd silam pv rajgopal and uh, anjali bharadwaj please keep watching we'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow